Good morning. Good morning to all of you, Elvis Carrera. Uh, good morning to you, Diana Mott. Looks like you're chiming in from Benson. Elvis from Lima, Peru. Thank you so much uh, as you are chiming in worldwide to Peace Through the Word uh, here from uh, Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona on Wednesday, the, uh, what is it now, the 18th of August already, 2021. So, uh, so good to be able to uh, wake up and be with you this morning. I've had my coffee, trusting perhaps that you have uh, as well, and that uh, you're ready for another new day uh, of God's grace and mercies. So, uh, brothers and sisters, um, this morning, uh, CFW Wather is going to be talking to us on a subject that I'm not sure gets uh, a lot of attention for which it ought to. <laughs> and uh, that subject is repentance. Repentance. Uh, you know, that everything uh, that Jesus says in his word should lead us to that action, repentance. Repentance should be a constant, minute-by-minute uh, minute, uh, activity in our daily lives, okay? <laughs> That's how important this subject is, okay? It's, it's off the radar. It's that big. It's that big repentance. So I pray it's going to bless us, pray it's going to maybe educate us, inform us, but I really pray that it's also going to give us genuine real peace. As we come together, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So the passage of Scripture that I want to share with you comes from, from uh, Luke's account in the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter 17, uh, down in verse 30. And so, uh, listen to this, if you would, please. It says that, Times of ignorance God overlooked. So when people were acting in ignorance, meaning not knowing any better, he overlooked that because they were ignorant. You know, they, they didn't understand and realize that what they were doing and thinking and whatever was not in accordance with what he desired. So he overlooked that. But now he commands. Now notice, God doesn't suggest. You know, he doesn't say, hey, this, is, this might be a good idea if you employ this. Nor does he recommend it. But he commands all people, not just some people, you know, not just the religious people or the Christians, but all people, doesn't matter who you are, where you're located, what your ethnicity is, or anything about you. But he commands all people everywhere to repent. Commands them. In other words, you will do this. And if you don't, I will send you to hell. All right? That's the bottom line. It's a command. It's an order. You will do this. All right, so let's see how CFW Wather unpacks this. Praying is going to bless us. When Paul preached the sermon for which today's reading comes, he was in Athens, a famous and distinguished city. With the words of our text, the apostle demanded repentance. A change of heart and mind from all people. Isn't that remarkable? <laughs> it 
Shouldn't there be people who already have the correct mind and therefore do not need repentance and conversion? Shouldn't there be people who from childhood on are good and live morally so they do not need to change their mind and can continue to live as before? If people were still as they were when they came forth from the creating hand of God, then of course there would be people who would not need to repent. In that event, each person would only be exhorted to remain in his holy and blessed condition, to use the powers bestowed upon him for good and to live according to the regulations of the divine law. But this is not so. It's, uh, it's a uh, fantasy. It doesn't exist. <laughs> the entire human race is fallen. We find the story of the fall in the first chapters of Holy Scripture. Since then, every person makes no difference who you are. From birth on has a mind with which he cannot please God. And therefore, he cannot come into fellowship with God and be saved. It does not exist. That's why we say you have no virtue, no good in you whatsoever of any kind, period. That doesn't sit well with people, especially in the United States. Um, by nature, every person does not truly make God his God. He does not regard him as his highest good, and he does not fear, love, and trust him above all things, not even close. Moreover, he does not avoid the sinful deed and do the good deed since he's not motivated by a pure fear and love of God. No way. Instead, every person now lives for this world above all else. Boy, we see that proliferately here in the United States. And he seeks his happiness in its pleasures, goods, honor, and wisdom. By nature, he is ruled by self-love and selfishness. In other words, what's in it for me? <laughs> what am I going to get out of this? He seeks his own advantage rather than that of his neighbor. And in all his dealings, he follows the selfish principle, each person is his own neighbor. Uh-oh. This mindset is not found in only a few people, the godless and the wicked ones, wicked ones, but in all people without exception. In other words, you can't sit there and say, well, I'm not like that. I'm going to make a bet. <laughs> you know, you most certainly are. Even those who claim to live in the strictest morality, those who are regarded as the best and noblest people, and those who, whose works the world uh, regards as above reproach, are still foul as ever. Therefore, no person can be saved in his natural condition. Everyone must first experience a thorough change in his heart, receive a thoroughly different mind, and obtain a completely different direction for his spirit. God must become his highest good. He must cease to live for this world, focusing instead on the world to come where he will seek his happiness and rest for his soul. Thus, he must no longer live for himself. Instead, he must present his entire life as an offering in love to his neighbor. See, that's why Jesus says, you know, if you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself and then take up a cross. Be willing to die to yourself. Then and only then can you follow me. If you don't do those first two things, you'll never follow me. You can't. 
So, yeah, we've got Christians that say, oh, yeah, but I'm not going to do those first things, but I'm still following Jesus. No, you're not. You're following yourself. And that's where most Christians are today, so-called Christians. And there's a lot of them. It's probably the 90, you know, over 95%, perhaps. A boatload, all right? So, um, for this reason, St. Paul once preached in Athens, but now God commands all people everywhere to repent. All who have not yet experienced this repentance, this change of mind, although they may appear to live as angels in this world, are not true Christians and do not stand before God in grace. Boy, that's scary. Let me repeat that. Those who have not yet experienced this repentance, this change of mind, although they may appear to live as angels in this world, are not true Christians. Christians, and do not stand before God in grace. So we best evaluate ourselves. Where are we? Where are we standing? Are we standing in a position of genuine repentance or, or not? If not, don't delay. Let's, let's repent. Ask God, God, help me to repent genuinely to go in a different direction, to think differently, to put action in a different way than it once was. Therefore, they are not on the path to blessedness and eternal life. See what I mean when I say you don't hear this very often. This doesn't get preached, and I don't understand why. Well, I think I do. Pastors are having problems with this themselves. And so therefore, they pick and choose what they want to preach on. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, Jesus says, adding, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, John 3, verse 6, and so on. According to this, then, the number of true Christians must be extremely small. And it is. Even among so-called Christians, there are many who have not yet experienced the necessary change of heart. You see, my brothers, the real danger, you know, Satan is the father of deception. And the real danger is we can talk the talk and walk the walk to where the world thinks we are a tremendous Christian and be as phony as a tremendous counterfeit piece of money. It's dangerous. So we need to repent. So, so where's the grace in this? The grace in this is Jesus calls us to repentance in our baptism to come to grips with where we are in our spiritual life and then confess that. Say, God, you know, I'm not where I need to be in my spiritual life. Forgive me and help me to genuinely repent of that and then to trust more in your gospel. All right? He will do that. Now, there may be some specific things that needs to take place that that is that you need to do differently in your life. I don't know. But then do those. You know, fruits of repentance. All right? Then do those. Okay? That's God's grace in action in this. Okay? And the same the same applies to me. You know, I'm not talking at you. I, I have the same stuff. So I'm talking with you. Okay, so this is important. Okay, and it's tough. You know, it's tough. There's no question, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm certain that this doesn't get preached off often, because everyone struggles with this. Everyone. Why? Because the sinful nature is is still with us, and Satan does not want this. Doesn't want us to repent. 
you know, and, and he's great at what he does. So this is a struggle. That's why Jesus says there's this constant tension. And that's why it's so important to be in church making regular use of the means of grace, word and sacrament ministry, to get the forgiveness of sins, life eternal, get washed again so that you can go back and do it. You know, it's what I've said all along. The rhythm of the Christian life is this up and down stuff. And if you're not doing that, if you're not a part of the church, you're not get, making regular use of the means of grace, you're, on, you're left to your own devices and you're going to fail miserably. You really are. You're going to crash and burn. Seriously, you're going to crash and burn. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. 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 Please, don't. I'm begging you. All right? Okay. All right, so this is the word of the Lord. It's not Ron York, and that's a good thing. Thanks be to God. <laughs> okay? So, O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, together, let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, together let's profess the wonderful grace and mercy of Jesus Christ that's recorded in the Apostles' Creed. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Let our cries come to you. In the day of our troubles, we call upon you, for you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, that's repentance, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, our lips will praise you for you have been our help and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Unite our hearts to fear your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, with our whole heart, and we glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer, and then listen <laughs> to our pleas for grace. We pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you, for into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you 
again so much for chiming in this morning for peace of the word. I pray that even on the subject of repentance that you realized genuine real peace in your life and that um, together by the power of the Holy Spirit we will uh, live a life of genuine repentance minute by minute being very conscious of our baptism where we get the cleansing and the washing minute by minute uh, and then um, continue to walk in a manner uh, of a repentant life. And so I pray that that will bless us, okay? Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Southern Arizona, Cochise County. Uh, tomorrow, Lord willing, uh, I, I'll be coming from my study in Oro Valley, Arizona in the morning. I'm believing early. And so uh, the wheels have been retracted, so have the flaps. So I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies. <laughs>